If you use Keynote and Freeform both on your iPad, you have a tool that allows you to create beautiful full screen slides with clean text and graphics, animations and builds and transitions. But you also have a tool that allows you to do question and answer with your audience, to annotate your screen and to interact while still keeping eye contact with your audience, unlike a traditional dry erase board or digital screen that would be behind you. And today I'll show you how to set all these up on your iPad. So here we have Keynote open on our iPad. We can see our presentation is there. We have our slides all set up over here in the navigator on the far left side. And when we present it on screen, it looks like this to our audience. Meanwhile, what we see is our presenter controls here, where again, on the left side, we can tap at the top and we have our navigator. We can jump to any slide we want to. We have our timer at the top of the screen, which we can tap on and change to a clock. We can change what shows up on our presenter display over here. And then we have our on-screen writing tools. And this is why we use Freeform, because in here, all we have at the bottom of the screen are a laser pointer and a pen, but you can't change the thickness and you can only use the colors that appear here on the screen. So Freeform becomes a great tool on our iPad. You can drag it from the bottom and you can go down here and tap on the Freeform icon and it brings up our Freeform board. This is the one we use for our demonstration video. And on here, you can see we have our tools. We're able to draw and annotate the screen. It's just like having a totally clear dry erase board that you can use while still keeping eye contact with your audience or your students if you're a teacher. And you can use all these tools that are available in free form that is the most of any of the app sets you get with Apple to be able to write on the screen. And here you can share it. And normally when you share free form with an audience, what they will see looks something like this. It's your iPad display and you have all this stuff top and bottom. I will share a link in the video description where you can use if you have an iPad and a MacBook and you have a software app called Ecamm Live, you can use that to crop the screen so that all the audience sees is a blank canvas and you can draw on it in free form, but they don't see the palette at the bottom of the screen. They don't see any of the user interface. You're able to operate it nice and clean. That's next level. If you're not worried about that, that still isn't bad. Being able to interact with your audience is much better than limited tools that are available if you're using Keynote trying to write on your screen. So here's a couple examples of how this would work. You could simply navigate through your pre presentation. And when you get to the very end, we have our summary slide here. We're finishing up our presentation and now we're ready for some Q&A. And so we can switch over to free form. I've noticed that a lot of presenters, a lot of teachers or professors have a Bluetooth keyboard connected to the computer they're using. If you can connect your Bluetooth keyboard to your iPad, you can use some of the same keyboard shortcuts you use on your Mac on your iPad. One of those is the ability to switch apps. So if you were in Keynote on your iPad and using a Bluetooth keyboard, you simply press command tab. I'll do that slowly for you. It allows you to switch to another app. When you do it more quickly, the audience barely notices the difference as it goes back from one thing to another. And you can be here on Freeform, drawing on your screen. Again, your audience would see this, your Freeform board, and you draw something for them and you explain something, and then you use your keyboard to switch and you're right back into Keynote. You have a few different options if you're doing your Q&A time at the end. You could simply have a plain white Freeform board that you write whatever you want on based on their questions and your responses. When we did this for the demo, video, we wrote questions down here and answered them on the screen as if we were talking to our audience. You also can combine the benefits of both apps together and have a guided Q&A time where I brought slides in from Keynote. Here's how I do that. If we go back to the Keynote app, close out of our presentation here, where the title of your Keynote presentation is, if you tap on this, it has an export option. One of the things you can choose is to export images. So we tap on there. We can choose all the slides. We can include the builds. This is more complicated. If you want certain things to show one at a time, we just want to show the entire slide for a summary. JPEG is a higher quality. You have different options here that you could choose. We'll just keep it simple today. So then we'll go up here and tap export and we can save those to our photos. In Apple Photos, if you create an album and put all those images into one album, it's much easier to find them and use them in other apps like Freeform. So I've exported those slides as images, sent them into photos on the iPad. I put them into a folder here on iPad. And now I'm gonna go back into Freeform. At the top of the screen, you have this little icon here. And if you tap on it, it gives you all these different elements you can import into Freeform. We're gonna choose photos or videos. From the left side of albums, we're gonna pick this iPad demo album, and we're gonna add all of these photos. Tap on them and go up here and tap 
add, and it brings all those photos in a free form. And it's a lot to see on screen, so we can zoom out by pinching. We can see all of our photos. Then you simply tap on one photo at a time and drag it where you want it on the screen. Now, I've already done this for us, and I've used the Scenes feature of Freeform, which if you don't know how to do that again, on the bottom left, you get onto the little bullet icon, tap on it, and you add a scene. And whatever you can see on your screen right there becomes the scene that your audience will see when you're projecting or when you move through your Freeform board. And so we've organized these all. Another tip I will give you is that when you add a scene, it just does it by number. And these thumbnails are pretty small, so it's kind of hard to see everything that's on there. So what I've done is I've simply titled each of them to match the slide that's on there. That way I can find the content easily, especially in a Q&A. Let's say somebody wants to talk about greeting and dismissing the door. I tap on it. I can easily see that part of the slide and then begin the Q&A. Somebody said, what was one of the benefits of greeting at the door? Your students helping out with hallway duty was one of those. And if somebody wants to know tips for at the door, I might say, well, grab a clipboard that has your seating chart on it so I can try to greet the students by name at the door or call them by name as I dismiss them. So here we have a Q&A about the slide, but I'm able to keep that up in front of everybody, look them in the eye, look down and draw out a few notes, and still continue to looking at them, never turning my back. This is one of the great advantages of using Freeform on your iPad versus a traditional dry erase board or even some of the smart TVs that have been used for presentations. You have to turn your back to interact with the screen and then turn back to your audience. And so this way you can maintain eye contact. Then in Freeform, you just go down here and navigate through, and you can jump around in any order you want to. You also can have them in the order you want to go through and animate them using the arrows one at a time, get to your summary and conclusion, and now you're done. You also, if I go back into Keynote, instead of waiting to the end, I could choose to go through and after each point, stop and ask for any questions or interact with my audience. Let's say I'm presenting, this is up on screen, I'm done talking about arriving early, now I want a chance for Q&A. I can switch over to Freeform, and I've set up this scene that has just the icon over there in the top left of the board and lots of space to write. And here I've given some notes about arriving 30 minutes early because you got to find a place to park, get into the office, find your classroom, get your lesson plans, and work on technology. All these are tips for substitute. But I was able to go through the presentation. Well, then if you have a keyboard that's connected, you switch back and you can advance on to your next point. You talk about that and you're done talking about it. You're able to switch back over for Q&A, go to the bottom left corner here, and I use that arrow to move through. And we're on our next point for the audience with Q&A where I can write on the screen and talk to them. And again, switch back over, go to the next point point, talk about it. So you can go back and forth and do a Q&A in the middle of your presentation at any point, especially if you have a Bluetooth keyboard connected, and you're able to walk back and forth with that keyboard in your free form and then keynote presentation. A few more things I want to show you on here. One of the things you can do is if you wanted to annotate a slide, you actually could use all of these tools that are available in free form. So let's say we wanted to highlight a specific area of a slide. We could use this tube tool here, it allows you to go over an entire area and encase that in with one shape. You also could choose to use the calligraphy pen if you wanted to. Use all these custom colors. Go over here and use your calligraphy pen tool. You basically can use whatever you want here now on your screen, even this watercolor tool that is almost like highlighting on your screen, all available within Freeform. And one of the best advantages is, like you've seen with the notes I've already written on here, it then saves it there in the Freeform board, whereas in Keynote, if you close out of the app and go back in, whatever you've done during that presentation is gone. It only temporarily saves it for you. You can also bring in, this is a text box, but one of the cool things with this is if you are in this text box and you bring up the highlighter, as you highlight the text, it automatically drops it below the text instead of on top, which is what a lot of apps do. And so it's easier for you to read the text while you are highlighting. And again, you can use any tool. If you wanted to use your pen and circle a certain phrase or make a note about proofreading, you could do that. These are all the different tools and it kind of shows how they look. These are all available in free form. Another thing here on the screen, you're able to change your background. To have these little dots on them if you want for guides. If you want to have that to help you draw something or you want to get a diagram accurate, you can use those. You also can turn them off. So there's just a couple examples of how to set up Keynote and free form to work together for an interactive presentation where you get the best of both apps. You can present with power. You can engage with your audience. You can use Q&A. So I'm curious, have you tried this? How did it work for you? What questions do you have still about using these two together? Simply leave me a comment in the comments below. This video came because of the questions you asked about both Keynote and Freeform and some of the frustrations you have with the limitations. That's it for now. If you really like the video, like it and subscribe to No 
know when the next video comes out. Until then, I'll see you next time.